All right, the injury for the game. Um, Garoppolo will be out. Um, Elijah Mitchell, questionable. Um, Ambry Thomas, questionable. Go ahead. What did you see from Christian today during practice? Um, he looked full go. Did Elijah get out in practice at all? Uh, he was out there in pre-practice, an individual. I think so. Limited. He obviously suffered his groin injury near the end of the game against Dallas. Um, sometime in there. Okay. Is there a question there? Or a statement? No, there was a question. Oh, I thought you had asked it. Oh, sorry, I thought you said he did. I'm not sure. I didn't ask him. It was on one of his um, plays, though. There's another question coming up. All right. I'll think of an answer. When, the, when there was this talk at the end of the year that the, the league may be thinking about going to neutral sites for title games, obviously maybe this week you would want that, but or would, would you rather see it stay the same and have the top seeds have the home games? Yeah, I would, I would not like that. That's, that's, what, that's what you work for in the year. It's a big reward. Uh, it's a big reward to get that bye week, and it's a huge reward to play at home, and um, uh, I hope it stays that way. Conversely, if you're the road team, is there something something special about that? If you go into the other team's home team and win, I mean, would that be lost too? Yes, yeah. I mean, there's pluses and advantages to both. I think there's more to playing at home because it's the crowd noise, but um, it's, it's always nice to go on go on the road too with your crew and rally together and go into a place where, you know, no one wants you there except your, your team. And um, that can be really fun and inspiring also. Reports uh, today and yesterday about uh, D'Amico getting high up on the list of a couple of teams. Do you have any insight into you know to where things stand with D'Amico and the, the Broncos and the Texans? Yeah, I got a pretty good idea. Yeah, he lets us know. He lets us know a lot. Do you sense that you're going to not have him beyond the season? Um, I mean, I don't think any decisions have been made, so I just know he has opportunities. Uh, he's been great. Um, he's really enjoyed this time. I mean, he's done it, did a hell of a job in those first two games. He hasn't missed a beat in any of his preparation and stuff. I know he enjoyed Thursday night and um, Friday night getting those interviews on his off time. And um, this week, it's been all work. And now his off time now will be on a plane, so can't get interviewed there. I feel like Elijah Mitchell's, you know, when he's out there, he's seeking more contact and being more physical as a runner than he was last year. No, I think he's always the same. He's as violent of a runner. I mean, we, that's why we started out calling him Drano because he knows he always goes to the right hole. But then we also call him the trash man too because when he's out there, it sounds like trash cans are banging around in the alley. So he um, likes to run into people violently when he has nowhere to go, and that's what makes him a special back. Do you feel like him and McCaffrey's running styles that kind of contrast each other and give defenses different looks? Uh, yeah, I think they're really – I mean, I think – Christian is great at hitting the right holes too, and when there isn't a hole there, he never turns things down, and he'll put his pads on, into people too. Um, but, but I do think that they're a really good mix of each other and their styles. Does he merit a nickname? Christian? Um, isn't it CMC? He, we haven't given him a nickname yet. He, yeah, you got, yeah, we haven't given him one yet. He's, what is it about Elijah you think that enables him to, when he does miss significant time, when he gets back, it's like he was never away. Um, I mean, I think running backs are a little similar like that. I mean, it's, you know, I think it takes time a little bit with running routes and things like that just of rust. But um, when he gets back and he's healthy, he, he knows how to run the ball. I think it's exactly how he looked in high school. I mean, in college, I'm sure that's how he looked when he was in high school. And that's how he looks in the league. And he's got the ability to do it. He's got the mindset to do it. I think it's always hard when um, you start out the – you, you miss so much of the offseason because of the surgeries and stuff he had. Then he got that bad injury in the first game, and then it just gets tough because when you don't get to practice a lot and stuff, it's just hard for your body to take the way that he plays. And he goes in and goes hard as can be, like he's never missed a beat. Um, hopefully next year in the offseason stuff, we'll have a little bit better luck to where he can build a little bit better base and um, help him do what he does when he plays, but help him do it a little bit more. Uh, kind of a couple more guys. No doubt. No doubt question, but some players have brought it up. The importance of not letting the Eagles get ahead, um, get the pass rush going, you know, make you one-dimensional. 
you know, obviously you want to not fall behind. But I mean, has that even been a, is it a talking point for you guys? No, I mean, I think that that's our goal every single week. You always want to get out to a good start and stuff. But anytime you go against a really good offense and a defense, and especially when that defense is um, starts with their pass rush, I mean, then it becomes even that much more important. So um, you got to be, um, I mean, that's always your goal. It's your goal every week. It's an extremely important one this week, but um, there's also other ways to win if you don't get off to a great start too. So um, you want everything to go ideal, but hey, however this game um, is dictated, um, I feel we, we got the group that can adjust to whatever. Last week, um, you talked about showing the Cowboys games to the team know how important was that as a rivalry this year, this, year, this week. Have you used any motivation from maybe the two last NFC championships, or is enough motivation the fact that you have that ticket to the Super Bowl? Um, no, we always do a little stuff. Today, um, we watched the 2002, I believe it was, um, NFC Championship game with, with the Bucks in Philly. Um, it was awesome to watch. It was a little bit boring because they had 33 runs for 45 yards, um, 1.5 a carry, um, and had 26 points. Um, so it was um, Tampa Bay's defense was awesome in that game. And um, Rondé Barber, I mean, I always knew how great Rondé was. Um, but that game was as good as it gets. And that's why my mind will be blown if he's not in the Hall of Fame soon. Was that the pick six at Veteran Stadium? Yep. Running it back like this, all the way pointing at Barber. It's cool. Was the general manager in watching that? Yeah. He was. <laughs> yeah, he was. He he came into my office right before when I was going through it to get prepared to show the team. And he was sat down and enjoyed watching it for about 10 seconds. And he got up and was pacing the room. And he didn't even realize I'm like, what's going on with you right now? And he's like, why? What do you mean? I'm like, he goes, oh, yeah, this brings back some feelings. So. <laughs> Yeah, you just like to show people the atmosphere and stuff. I know that was the last game at the vet, um, but I mean, I just there's parallel. You go pick a game at almost any time, and you see parallels in everything. Um, players are all the same, different shoulder pads a little bit. The last time we watched when we went to the '82 games, much different shoulder pads, but they're all great athletes who play at a high level. Rules are a little bit different, but it's all the same stuff. And I love showing guys is to make people aware of the moment they're in now. Because sometimes people don't realize that until they're a little bit older. All right, guys. All right, thanks, guys.